i me.
birthday, you got an anniversary, you got a graduate, you got a new business, man, send that good news over to phillyoffice1 at yahoo.com so we can feature it on the good news of the week. We got to get it in by Thursday by 3 p.m. so we can feature yes. it right here on the good news of the week. Yes. All right, guys. Now, discipleship training class, y'all, we're going to be taking a little break. So we're going to take off for September. Cool, cool. But don't fear, we will be coming back October 1st. So mark your calendars, October 1st. We will be coming back to discipleship training. So go ahead, enjoy the little break. Get a little extra, maybe 30 minutes sleep. And get ready for October 1st to come on in. Discipleship training classes will be starting again. 8.15 a.m. before service starts. Come and get the word before the word. That's it, you guys. Yeah. Some more things to remember to uh, remind you guys about coming up in the month of October is the Feast of Tabernacles. It's our first annual Feast first of Tabern annual. Tabernacles happening October 5th through the 8th. It's going to be an amazing uh, weekend. And uh, we want you guys to register, everybody. If you're in-house, if you're online, you guys are coming in, we want you guys to go to our website, register for Tabernacles. There's a bunch of different events that you guys can take a yes. part of. We're going to have a health fair. Yes. We're going to have a word on, on Tabernacles. We're also going to have a, um, a 5K walk or run. We're also going to have a color run for the kids. We're going to have sports. We're going to have uh, a baseball, softball tournament, yes. basketball tournament. Yes. We're going to have a whole lot of fun this weekend. So the things that you want to be a part of, man, go ahead and register and you can click each, each individual um, activity. So that could be tailor-made for you that you yes. can be a part of. Yes, now you, for, you forgot about the camp out. I forgot about the Friday camp evening, out. That's right. Friday morning, the health fair. And you forgot about the ladies. What's yeah, up with man, that? You got nah. ladies. Yes, our, our hat luncheon. Yeah. So ladies, don't forget the hat luncheon will be on the Friday at 2 p.m. Now look, hear me good. <laughs> Go ahead and register because seats are limited. If you want to be, make sure you be in the house, go ahead and register. Get registered for the luncheon. Um, again, limited seating. So go ahead and get in and uh, get those hats ready. That's good. That's yeah. good. So Feast of Tabernacles, October 5th through the 8th. We want to see everybody here for our first annual Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. All right. So, guys, don't forget, Monday through Friday, we have noonday prayer, 12.15 to about 1 o'clock. So, look, if you have a break, you're on your lunch break, you're off, come on out and join us for noonday prayer here in the sanctuary. Look, it's, it's time to pray, James. Yeah, we need prayer. It, it's you time to pray. It. Yes. Do it. Remind you guys also, man, Tuesday night Bible study is still continuing on in the building in Lafayette, 7 o'clock every Tuesday. It's not live stream, so you do want to take part and come in the building to get a word or midweek word for service on Tuesday night Bible studies. Yes, and then Wednesday, Atlanta, it is your turn. Bible study at 7.30 p.m. Your location is 260 Forest Parkway, Forest Park, Georgia. So if you're in the area, go ahead and join them there for Bible study. And if you're in the Dallas area, Thursday night is your Bible study. Thursday night, Dallas Bible study happening at 7 o'clock. They are located at 3269 Independence Parkway, Plano, Texas. So if you're in that Dallas area, Plano area, uh, DFW, man, go out to their Thursday night Bible studies. Bring somebody, invite somebody at, at your job, a family member, bring them in 3269 Independence Parkway, Dallas, Texas. Yeah. All right. I think we got everything. I think so. We covered it. All right. So I don't know about you. I know you're ready to worship. Well, so go Jim, ahead. Let's remind them one more thing. What we got? So y'all, if the word touches you today yes come yes. and join us for the after show come yes. talk to us we won't bite i promise you never know what you got from the word how that could help somebody else and just we've had people come up and share their testimony yes. so again you don't know who's listening so come on join us for the post show right after service we won't bite amen that was good good yeah. reminder yes so y'all come on through so all right Okay, we now, ready? Now, now we ready. Now we can go to work. Okay, let's yes. get our dance on. Here we go. Right now, you guys, stand to your feet. Get ready. It's worship time. Worship time. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me to come into the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this hallelujah. morning? Come on, we're going to give them a shout of praise. Somebody say, hallelujah. Put your hands.
I think we need to sing that again. Y'all ready? Come on, let's say it. Say Yahweh. Say Yahweh. 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 Holy is your name. Holy is your I name. I don't wanna take it in vain. I don't wanna take it in vain. Say Yahweh. I like this part right here. Who else can lead us, lead us through freedom? No one, no one, no one. And who else can heal all our sins and diseases? No one, no one, no one. And who else can walk, walk on the water? No one, no one, no one. And who else can answer? Answer by fire, fire No one, no one, no one And who else can bring down the tallest of giants? No one, no one, no one And who else can silence the roar of the lion? No one, no one, no hey. one And who else is worthy, worthy of worship? No one, no I'm one, sing that again. no one And who else is worthy? Worthy of worship, no one, no, no one, one, no one, no one, no one. We gotta sing that again. No one, no one, no one. This morning, I can tell y'all came ready to worship. We're gonna say this right here. I searched and I found nobody like Jesus. 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 Who can heal me like Jesus? Nobody like Jesus. Who can save me like Jesus? Nobody like Jesus. Who can change me like Jesus? Nobody like Jesus. Who can free me like Jesus? Nobody like Jesus. Say nobody. Nobody, 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 say 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 nobody, 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 there will be, there will be no other God before you. There is no one, there is no one above you. No one inside you, nobody like you. There will be no other God before you. No one, no one, no one. Come on, bless his name this 
morning. There's nobody like him, no one before him, no one after he is. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Somebody say hallelujah. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody like there's nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Who can heal like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Who can save like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. Who can free like Jesus. Nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. 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 And there will be no other God before you. Before you. Hey. And there will be no other God before you. There is no one. There is no one above you. No one beside you, nobody like you, and there will be no other God before. Say no one, no one, no one, no one. Come on, give God a head clap of praise in this place. We're going to raise the highest praise. We're going to sing hallelujah. We're going to sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. We lift you, we lift you, we lift you. Whoa. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah. It's louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. Whoa, I raise a hallelujah. Cause guess what? Heaven comes to fight for me. Come on, let's sing that one more time. Say, I raise, I, I raise, raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemy. In the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Louder than the unbelief. Because I raise, I raise, I raise. Hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. My weapon is a melody. See, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. To fight for me, cause I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing. Middle of the storm, middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises. You're my praises. Sing 
sing a little louder We're gonna sing a little louder Yeah Sing a little louder Sing a little louder Sing a little louder In the presence of my enemies yeah. Sing a little louder Louder than the unbelief Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody Sing a little louder Heaven comes to fight for me Sing a little louder My weapon is a melody Sing a little louder So heaven will come fight for me Sing a little louder Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, I raise a hallelujah. Cause I raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. We raise a hallelujah. One more time, y'all sing it with us. See, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah I raise a hallelujah Hallelujah Let's see cool. Hallelujah 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 It's hallelujah Thank you Jesus Hallelujah It's hallelujah it's hallelujah. Only because I love him. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Woo. 
Hallelujah. Come on and lift your voice if you truly love him. Hallelujah. We just worship the name of our Lord on today. For he is truly good. He's mighty. He's wonderful. He's awesome and he's holy. Come on, let's just take a moment to talk about him. To talk about how faithful he is. About how loving he is. About how amazing and awesome he is. God, we could go on and go, go on and on and we would, we would never reach the end of how good you are. Hallelujah. And it's so good that the God of all creation knows our name. He placed the moon and the sun and the stars in the sky and he still knows your name. Come on, you ought to be grateful for that. Anybody grateful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cause he knows my name. Cause he knows my name. Cause he knows my name. You're the God of creation, you know my name. You know my name. And oh, how you comfort me. Yes, you do. And oh, how you counsel me. And it still amazes me that I am your friend. So now I pour out my heart to you. every voice say you know my name you know my name it's good news today that you know it you know my name who am i that you are mindful of me you know my name oh you know my name you know my name yes you do and oh, how you walk, oh, how you walk with me, oh, how you talk with me, oh, how you talk with me, and oh, how you tell me, oh, how you tell me, and I am your own. With me, you 
talk with me, Lord? Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you tell me. Oh, how you tell me. That I am your own. I am your own. Come on, you ought to rejoice right there that you are his own. God, you know. So I trust you in my life. I trust you with it all. Oh, no fire can burn me. No battle can turn me. No mountain can stop me. Cause you hold my hand. Now I'm walking in your victory. Cause your power is within me No giant can defeat me Cause you hold my hand No fire oh, can, can burn me No battle, no battle can stop me can turn me No, no mountain yeah. can stop me Cause you hold, Cause you hold my hand Your power, your power is within me. Is within me. No giant, no giant can defeat me. Why? Because you hold my head. No fire, no fire can, burn can burn me. No battle, no battle could ever turn, turn me away. No mountain can stop me. Cause you hold, Cause you hold my head. Now I'm walking in your victory. Cause your power. It's living on the inside of me. Cause you hold, you hold my hand. You hold my hand. I don't have to worry, cause you hold my hand. I don't have to worry. You hold my hand. I don't have to worry. You hold my hand. Cause you hold my hand. You hold my hand. Cause it's all in the rain. That you should know my name. Who am I, Lord? That you should know my name. When I consider the works of your hands, and the moon and the stars that you made, who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Thank you, Lord. Oh, how you walk with me. And oh, how you talk with me. Whoa, oh, oh, how you tell me that I am your own can we say you know my name you know my name you know my name you know my name the almighty God knows my name you know How you 
you lift up your voice and Hallelujah. worship him? God, you know me. Know me God. Come on, if you're glad about it. Hallelujah. Come on, he placed the sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky. His glory is higher than the heavens, and he still knows your name. He thinks of you. He considers you. Come on. You are bought with a price, a price that you could not pay. He sent his only begotten son to die for you. Who am I that you are mindful of me? But you still know my name. I was a ranch undone, but you still know my name. All full of sin, God, but you still know my name. I'm so unworthy of your love, God, but you still know my name. for knowing my name hallelujah we rejoice God at the thought that you know us God by name hallelujah you know my name yes God you know my
sometimes we can be rebellious children but guess what he still made a way sometimes we can not follow him but guess what he still loves us nothing can separate us from his love he knows our very name he, he knows the very hairs that we have on our head some of them we started off with more now we have less but he knows how many you got he said he knew you before you were in your mother's womb 
Think about that. Sometimes we, we feel so insignificant in this world and we, we feel like we were not worthy. We feel like we're not important. But think about this. The Most High God knew you before you were even born. And he said, I got something special just for them. I have a purpose and a plan just for them. And then we born and we grew up, we wild out. We did our thing. But God said this year, even while you were yet sinners, his love never changed for us. The love that he had for us before we were born, after we were born, we done all the dirt that we could. His love never changed for us. It says while we were yet sinners, Christ displayed his love towards us and went to the cross on our behalf. If you're grateful, make some noise this morning. Amen? Hallelujah! 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 Most High God, we just give you praise and honor and glory for your love towards us today. God, we just bless your name. We lift you up on high. Father, you are worthy to receive every ounce of praise that we can give you. We thank you so much this morning, Lord God, that you never forgot about us, God. We, we still are important in your eye, God. We are still considered the apple of your eye, oh God. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory today just because you are God. You are God. Not us. Hallelujah. King of glory. We worship you today. Father, we worship you. You're so worthy. You have been too good to us. Mm. You've been too good. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you, Father, for just allowing us to experience you this morning. Father, we thank you for you being our, our daddy, God. And in your eyes, we'll always be your little children. Father, we pray now that, that your anointing would just rest in this house this morning. Father, just let your anointing just rest in this house. Father, I pray, Lord God, for all of us as we just sit in your presence, God. Father, I pray that nothing would distract us, God. Nothing would take our minds off of you. Father, I pray that today, Lord God, that we'll be extra focused on you today, God. That every word that goes forth, Lord God, is our heavenly daddy talking to us as dear children. Father, we love you today. We honor you. We appreciate you for who you are. Continue to bless our time together, most high. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, as you return to your seat, just keep in mind how good God is. Amen? Man. All right. Man, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you think about how big God is compared to how small we are, man, that, that brings things into perspective a little bit. Amen? Well, good morning, y'all. How y'all doing this morning? Everybody good? How y'all are? Man, y'all was getting all excited and praising God for real. That's, that was a beautiful thing, man. Well, we want to welcome all of you to Philadelphia Christian Church, man. Thank y'all so much for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Everybody here in the sanctuary, all of our online family, uh, everybody on YouTube and Facebook and the app, man. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We pray that the blessings of the Most High God is with you as they are here in the sanctuary. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, brothers and sisters, y'all know what time it is. This is the time that we uh, transition from praising and worshiping through song and singing, and it's the time that we worship him through our giving. So, brothers and sisters, uh, it's time for tithes and offerings. Ushers, can y'all come on and bring the baskets? Amen? Amen. All right. I, okay, now y'all was all... When he moved mountains, you were shouting, and he was, you know, he was... Made away. But now, okay, brothers and sisters, it's time for tithes and offerings, okay? It's a time that we can give back to him because some of us, we just want to give him a shout of praise, but we don't want to give him a shout of cash, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> Hallelujah. But guys, this is the thing. At this time right here, we're not first forcing anybody to give anything, but this is the time that we just give back to him, just a portion of what he blessed us with. The Bible says if you give a little, you get a little. You give a lot, you get a lot. It's, it's not complex. It's when you give in these baskets, you are showing the Most High God that I appreciate you and I trust you with everything. Not only with my health, not only with my relationships, I trust you with my finances too. Because sometimes, man, we hold so hard to those little two or three little dollars we got in our pocket when he wants you to release that and bless you with even more. Amen? So, brothers and sisters, there's many different ways that you can give here at Philly. You can definitely give here in the baskets, but also you can give electronically. Uh, you can give on the church app. Uh, all you got to do is click the donate button. You can go on the cash app, cash tag PCC. LA, you can text and give 2940050, or you can go on the website, philadelphiacc.org. It doesn't really matter how you do it. The thing is this here, that when this time comes, it should just be an excitement that starts to build up. That you know, and when I release this right here, man, I am being obedient to the Most High God. So brothers and sisters, put a smile on your face, stand on your feet. It's time for tithes and offerings. Amen. church in the Lord's house. Amen? So we are ready and we're living in the overflow. Amen? That's it. Guys, we got a few announcements this morning. Um, as, uh, as normal, Monday through Friday, noonday prayer. Every single day, Monday through Friday, 12.15 to 1 o'clock, man. If you can, be here. Make effort to be here in the church, in the Lord's house, praying. Um, and man, I'm telling you, man, God does some awesome things in noonday prayer. Also, man, we have Bible study uh, Tuesday. Y'all know what time it is. It's Lafayette's time. Lafayette, make sure you are in the building. We will not be live streaming uh, on Tuesday. 
Uh, Wednesday is going to be Atlanta. Uh, and Thursday will be Dallas, man. If, and I would say this here to my online viewers, man, if you can make it to any one of these uh, in-person Bible studies, man, do your best to be there, man. I'm telling you, it's just a, it's something so great, man, when God's people really come together. Amen? All right. Other than that, guys, we are getting ready and we are gearing up, man. Things are going great for October the 5th through the 8th, Feast of Tabernacles. It's going to be our first year celebrating that together as, as God's people, man. So, look, this is, a, this is a major thing. It's a major event, a major holiday that's going on. And, listen, I need everybody to do this for me. Okay, let me see a show of hands. Now, well, no, don't show your hands. Just, all right. If you have not registered yet, just blink your eyes twice. You know, just... Just come on, no, don't, don't be, it's all right, we're not, there's no condemnation to those who have not went on and registered yet. That's, what, that's in Proverbs chapter 33, so y'all just check it out. Uh, that's it. All right, so look, we need y'all to go to the register, guys. There's a ton of events that's going to be going on during that week, but we need you guys to register. Uh, seats are uh, limited at, at certain, uh, certain uh, events. Let's see, you got a list of them? Can I get the list, guys, of uh, all the events that's going to be going on uh, on that day? Uh, during that week, October 5th, it kicks off. Again, if you go to the website, everything is going to be there. Uh, let's see. Yes, don't worry about it anyway. I'm just going to keep on going. Uh, so definitely make sure you register. Uh, every activity, there's a bunch of different activities that's going to be going on. There we go. October the 5th, we have a welcome, welcome reception uh, and sermon and message. Look, guys, October 5th is going, it's going to be the kickoff day. Friday is the activities that are really going to get started. Friday is going to be the men's camp out that's going to be going on. Men, where y'all at? All right, okay, thank God for all three of y'all. Men, where y'all at? All right, there go a few. Some on that side, they just, their voice is a little high pitched, but it's good. They was hoarse, you know, they, that happens to us. We lose our voice sometimes, but that's going to be the men's camp out on Friday. Also, uh, on uh, Friday, it's going to be the women's luncheon, right? All right. Okay, six of y'all did something, okay. I know the women don't like to get excited this much. Now, but a uh, women's luncheon, man, there's a limited amount of seat, ladies, really. There's only a limited amount, and we will not. I know last time we done something, and everybody wanted to come in late, and so we kept trying to make room and make room and make. We're not doing that this time, guys. We're not. So register early. Get yourself, get your t ladies, get your tickets for the luncheon. Also, man, there will be a health fair going on here at the church, man. Uh, we will have our uh, uh, Christian doctors, believers, that's going to be here, man. They're going to be doing uh, biometric screenings and all that. Man, you need to be here for that, man. Come check on yourself. You know, get a, a, a great uh, godly uh, uh, opinion of, of your health. And, man, you just need to be here. And that's going to be on, uh, on Friday also. Now, Saturday, man, this is going to be our first uh, Philadelphia 5K run. And, uh, you know, run and walk. I'll probably be just riding my bike or some skates or something. But this is the thing. You need to be here for that also, right? <laughs> but, yeah, don't you act like that, bro. <laughs> yeah, I just, I might do like a half, one and a half K. Uh, I'll be special K on that day, amen? But 5, 5K is going on Saturday, October the 7th. Also, it'll be a, a color run for the kids. Um, so I might just do that. So I might just throw a little dust on the children. And, amen. But yes, so that's, that's, that's on a Saturday. Also, man, softball tournament going to be kicking off. Uh, but there is a little participation fee. So guys, y'all need to go down and register. Sunday, don't forget, man, we got the word and basketball. This is a major time for us, brothers and sisters. Man, y'all don't sleep on that. Make sure you sign up. And also, man, if you need some help signing up, man, go to the welcome, not the welcome center, but if you go to our bookstore, um, you know, maybe you're not as savvy on the computer. I know some of my, you know, my seasoned saints, they're still on MySpace. And uh, <laughs> that's all right. Go to the bookstore, man. We'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Amen. Let's go to and stretch forth our hand and pray a blessing on the offering. Hallelujah. Most high God, we thank you again for just, uh, just a joyful time that we can have together. God, we, we thank you, Lord God, that you are truly the center of our joy. Father, we pray your blessings upon the tithes and the offerings. God, every person, Lord God, that gave faithfully to you, God, that maybe this was their first time. God, I just pray, most high God, that your blessings would come upon them so strong, Lord God, that they would know that, that, that they, they did Something right for you, God. Father, I pray, Lord, God, a million-fold return on whatever they gave today. Father, I also pray, Lord, God, that you continue to bless us as a ministry, God. Continue to open doors, Lord, God, that we can bring the gospel message, the Hebrew message, Lord, God, to the ends of the earth, Father. God, I pray now, Lord, God, that you will continue to use Philly mightily in the earth. 
And in the end, Father, we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. Amen? Amen. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Bishop Omar Thibault for special baby dedication. Amen? Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. How y'all doing this morning? Hallelujah. 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 We got a, we got a few things to, to cover before we get to the word. Amen. And so uh, we're going to get in it. Amen. Um, we got a special guest this morning, Mayor President Josh Guillory. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him a Philly, a Philly welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the most high God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we'll, we'll be bringing him up, amen, for um, some acknowledgments, and, and so he'll come on up and, and talk with us for a second. Um, right before we get to that, um, we got a, a special dedication. All of them are special, amen, hallelujah, and uh, uh, First Lady's uh, only sister, Destiny, amen, want to dedicate some, some beautiful baby girls this morning, amen. So... Uh, so with, with, with Destiny, TP, amen, and all the family, come on up, amen. Uh, Y'all can come on up on the stage. First Lady, I know you want to come on up too, amen. Mother-in-law, hallelujah. Where mother-in-law at? She already. Hallelujah. Glory to the most high. Oh, shout. Y'all come on up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's my family, y'all. That's my family, y'all. Hallelujah. That's my family. Bless y'all. Good to see you. Oh, good to see you. See you up here too, see you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, all right. Glory to God. Come on, Pete, you good? You got some? We're going we to use whatever we got. Because it's not the oil. It's the prayer behind the oil, amen? It ain't the oil. It could be any kind of oil. So, Father, we anoint these precious children. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for them. And so, y'all y'all know the, ro the routine, what we do is, hallelujah, we're going to ask the family some questions, we're going to ask the parents some questions, then we're going to ask the church some questions, amen. Anything you say can and will be held against you. I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go. Uh, family, we're here to dedicate these children. Um, is it uh, your belief, do you affirm, amen, that, uh, that you'll give your prayers and your support, amen, to these kids to help them be raised and grow up in the admonition of the Lord, amen? Do you agree that if you see them going astray, that you'll help them stay on the right path in the absence of, of mom and dad? Fam, if y'all agree with that, say we do. We do. All right, mama and daddy, oh, come on. Come on, Father Law. What's going on, Father Law? Hallelujah. Come on in. Hallelujah. That's my wife, Daddy, y'all. You can't do nothing without him. Come on now. And so, uh, so, so parents, amen, Destiny and TP, do y'all agree to raise these beautiful girls in the admonition of the Lord? I know the answer to it, but we just want to be on record. You promise to pray for them. Bring them to a good godly church, Philadelphia, <laughs> and uh, and just raise them in the faith. You know, if you agree with that, please say we do. Amen. Church, you know they say it takes a village to raise a child, but we got something better. We got a church. Amen. We got a church. All huh, right, Andy. Hallelujah. So we do we promise to give our advice, to give our admonishment, to give our I will help our prayers. 
uh, words of encouragement, and even if they fall short, to give our resources as a body to make sure these young kids grow up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Church body, what say you? We do? We do. Stretch forward your hands and let's pray a blessing on these wonderful children. God, we thank you for Ashanti. We thank you for Naomi. We give you praise, God, that they've been raised up for such a time as this. We thank you for the parents you've given them, God. Parents that's in the Lord, in the church, Lord God. We thank you, God, that you've got a beautiful future for them. And now we stand in agreement with the plans that you have for them. We pray in the name of Jesus that you keep them from all hurt or harm. That you bless them with a real salvation. That you bind the enemy away from them in every way, God. That you give them good husbands, Father God. And don't allow them to marry no fools, Lord God. We pray that you'd show up in their gifts and that they would dance and sing and work in the church just like their parents, just like their grandparents. God, let the legacy continue, Father God. And we pray, God, when it's all said and done, that they would be with you in the end. We dedicate our girls to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah! Woo! Hallelujah. So good to see you. Hallelujah. I think that Miss uh, Miss Shalando have a certificate or something for y'all. So we love y'all. Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all. Love you too. Don't you make me cry up here. Love you, Hallelujah. Thank y'all, Miss Ramona. Thank y'all so much. Bless, bless y'all. Bless y'all. Oh, I got y'all. For the love. I was It was right on time. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, saints, we, uh, like I said, y'all, we, 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 we have a special guest. Amen. And, yeah. and, uh, and y'all, y'all, we call him officially the mayor president. Amen. But, but like he tell me, he say, just call me Josh. Just call me Josh. That's what he tells me. Amen. And uh, I want to tell you, amen, that uh, Philadelphia has a friend, yeah. amen, yeah. In, in the mayor's office. Anybody hear me up in here? Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have no idea, amen, how, amen, his office is open to the needs of, of, of this church, uh, to your pastor, amen, and to this side of town, actually. Um, I've never met a mayor um, that had meetings on the north side, amen. Uh -huh. Uh, every month like this mayor has, amen. Um, I've been to the meetings, amen, and whether they, they good, they bad, or they ugly, he want to hear everything that the people on this side of town want to say, and he don't have to do that. When we buried Trayford, he was here, sitting in that same section, all right? He don't have to do that, all right? He don't have to do that, all right? When we looked at the numbers, Okay, he has invested a hundred million dollars on this side of town, more than any mayor in the city Lafayette history. He don't have to do that. And when nobody knew, but we was praying that a certain statue get removed from our downtown. See, I had talked to all the Democratic candidates, but they they wouldn't. First lady, I'd tell you. We sat down and met with him at Oak Bowl. All right? But that's why it's not about a party. You understand what I'm saying? Black folk need to get out of a party. You got to do who, who want to work with you. And not all the time your party going to give you the best deal. We got to begin to deal. All right? So I'm going to Democratic candidates trying to, listen, we, we got a need that we feel would be a spiritual remove a spiritual uh, yoke off of our people. They won't hear us. I talked to the least likely person from my mind that would help us out. He looked at me and I said, look, I said, Josh, I said, we'll pay for it as a church. All right? When it got done, he not only removed it, but he paid for it to be removed. <laughs> I 
That ain't never been done. He don't have to do that. But when he got up and me and First Lady went to the debates, and it was the funniest thing. He said, he say, they say, how you going to lead Lafayette? He said, I'm going to lead Lafayette with my heart. That's what he said. That's what he said. And I laughed about that. And, I, and, and once again, it just, it's just an indelible moment in time for me when I heard him say that. And, and I just want to say that we have a mayor president that's just not leading the Republican way, the Democrat way, the white way, the black way. But he's really leading with his heart. All right? All right? And I want to tell you, it's God that controls that heart. Turning it like the rivers of water, any way he wanted to go, it's God that's leading him. And let me tell you, listen, when he's doing stuff like, like, like building Brown Park up, y'all saw the construction going on, all right? We getting us a park like, like Bruce Hall in Youngsville. He don't have to do that. He don't have to do that. But while he's doing that, you know, he could be making enemies on this other side of town. How you going to do good for us? Make enemies on that side, and then still have enemies on this side. Now, if somebody do you right, you do right by people that do you right. All right? All right? And so that's the way that your pastor is ruling. Okay? I'm going to bring him up here in a second, but I got a little story to tell you first. All right? Y'all know me and my stories. <laughs> there were two brothers. Two brothers. And they lived right on the side of each other. Neighbors. They were farmers, so they had acres of land. Been ace boom coon since the day they were born. All of a sudden, a fallout happened. And they broke friendship. And they broke friendship over something small. But over time, the small thing became a big thing. Because each brother began to do something to work on the other brother's nerves. And so finally they stopped talking. They keep the families apart. Listen, I don't even know you. I don't even want to know you. Listen, we're going to, listen. One brother took his, took his, 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 his tractor and, and, and dug a ditch through the middle of their properties and filled it with water. He made a canal, all right? His other brother said, oh, he want to act like that? Well, I'm going to build a 10-foot high fence. He called up a carpenter, a famous carpenter in the area, and he said, listen, he said, I got some wood on the side of my property. I want you to take all that wood and build me a 10-foot high fence. And the carpenter looked at him and said, you sure you want to do that? And he said, yeah. He said, why you want to do that? He said, because the man next door, I thought that was your brother. The man next door is no good. And I want a fence 10 foot high so I don't even have to, I don't even have to see him. The carpenter said, okay, I see. He said, I'm going to give you exactly what you want. The man leaves and the carpenter get to work. He come back and to his surprise, he don't see a 10-foot high fence. He see a bridge. A beautiful bridge with handrails and, and lights. It's just beautiful. He storm out of his truck and he upset. He is mad as hot as a 45. And he come through that. I'm going to tell this carpenter a piece of my mind. He going he to build me my fence. And as soon as he's walking to, on his property to get to this beautiful bridge, he see his brother coming across with his arms open wide. His brother had tears in his eyes. And his brother said, my brother, after all I said about you, after all I did to you, I built a canal to separate our properties. And while I was building a canal, you was building a bridge. <laughs> Them two brothers hugged and they cried. And the carpenter was just right there watching it all. Turned to the man, he said, did I give you what you want? And the man said, yes, you did. You gave me what I really wanted. You gave me my brother back. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 
The two brothers said, listen, we got to work for you for the rest of your life. Come on and work. Carpenter picked up his bag and said, listen, I would love to stay with y'all, but I got more bridges to build. <laughs> Think about it is, who are you going to be in the story? You going to be the canal builder or a bridge builder? Far too many times, the leaders on our side of town been building canals. And they call me and they tell me, I can't do nothing, I can't do nothing. You can't do nothing because you just, you, you, you're making enemies instead of making friends. This is not two cities. It's one city. And if we can find somebody that could do good to both sides, that's really what we want. You don't want nobody just to do good on one side, then the other side going to fall apart. We need roads. We need drainage. We need schools. We need libraries. We need parks. Not on one side, but on both sides. Today, I'm bringing you up a bridge builder. I'm bringing you up somebody that's helping us on both sides. Even though he don't have to, and sometimes he might even be making enemies to help us on both sides. I know it personally. All right? I know it personally. Don't believe everything you hear. And watch yourself. Watch yourself. Everybody want to give you a new thing. Why would you want a new thing if what you got already ain't broken? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right? I can go on and on, but we, we got a gift. Come on, bring up the gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First lady, you coming on up too? Yes, I do. I always want you close to me. So we like to present this to, to our mayor president. We got a, we got a Philly shirt, shirt, shirt up in here. All right? Because we accepting him as a member of Philadelphia. He, he got his own faith, which is our faith. He believed in Jesus Christ and him crucified. But, but on our Philly shirt, it says, friend of Philadelphia. I present to you our mayor president, Josh Guillory. Come on up. Come on up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great job. Great job. I'm going to put this on the table and I'm going to get out your way. And for the. <laughs> and for the record, this will go through ethics and compliance and make sure we're all legal. <laughs> you, yeah, you know. You know. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I could go a lot of places with that. Bishop, thank you. First Lady, thank you. Congregation, thank you. I am so blessed to be here. I really appreciate you let this little Catholic boy come and pray with you on Sunday morning. I'm going straight back to the cathedral telling Father Chester we're going to upgrade our choir here. I say that with love. I'm very honored to serve as our mayor president. These last four years have been a blessing. We've been through a lot. We've been through a lot as a community, but it has been such a blessing. And I think you can agree with me. There's way more good in our community than there is bad. Amen? So I'll tell you, I'm here to worship with you. I was your brother in Christ before I was the mayor president. I'm your brother in Christ as the mayor president. I'm you'll be your brother in Christ after I'm the mayor president. But I have a few little declarations here. With whatever secular power that has been given to me, whatever power you've given me, whatever power Almighty God has given me, I declare that God is present in Lafayette, Louisiana. Amen. The God that gave us our first covenants with Adam and Eve and with Noah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of David. The God that gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us and to die for our sins, our sins. That God. The God is present in Lafayette, Louisiana. I love you. I love to worship with you. Thank you. But Philly, I got a question. I got one question. Who's ready for the word? Woo! I 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And Deacon, we'll, we'll bring this, go ahead, bring this to your seat for me. And um, we want to give praise to God, hallelujah, for our ushers and everybody who helped us out with that. Amen. Putting that together. And uh, hallelujah, we got to be a, a bridge builder. Amen. And, and, and the reason we have to be a bridge builder is because Christ is the ultimate build, bridge builder. All right, all right. Instead of leaving a canal between us and his father, all right, he built a bridge huh? with two pieces of wood and three nails. And that bridge is the cross. And so that's why we got to be bridge builders too. Don't come here and separate our city and separate our community. You can get a lot more done if you work together. You can, you can get more bees with honey than with vinegar. Come on, give God some praise up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you that, that, that on their end, they're ready to work. They're ready to help. Hallelujah. And so uh, we just got to find leaders that's ready to help on our side too. Amen. And, and I want to say this, and I'm going to keep on going. I pray that a time come where, amen, some of you uh, on this, in this city uh, make a decision to, to run for office. I'm believing that, that out of this house and all those on live stream that can't be here, we can have city councilmen out of this house. We can have, amen, parish councilmen out of this house. And I say councilmen, but let me get this right. Council women. Amen. Amen. Let me get this right. So I just want to put that in your spirit. Amen. I know that the ceiling look high and you're like, man, can I accomplish something like that? You just got to be a person that want to get some things done. You got to just be a person that want to work together. And, 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 and listen, you can do this. All right. You can do this. A lot of people don't ask me, man, Pastor, run. I, listen, I, I can't run for nothing. I'm already running for something. I'm running for Jesus. I, I, can't, I can't run for nothing else. It keep me too busy, I, you know. But you can. You can. You can go down there on our behalf, amen, and build bridges and not canals. Come on, give y'all some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mayor President. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, like, like Josh said, let's get ready for this word. Who ready for the word? Who ready for the word? All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's turn to John 18 in verse 15. We'll get, get cranked up. And uh, I'm going to set my timer so we can get out of here at a good time, y'all. Y'all be keeping me too long. The Saints playing today. What time they play today? Anybody know? 12? Well, we got to get out of here. Now, I can't tell if they're telling me the truth or not, even in church, because sometimes they're playing at 3. Father Law, what time they playing? Okay, well, I believe you. I believe you. All right, all right. Look, I believe you, Father Law. Okay, all right. So let's look at John 18, 15. Hallelujah, worship team. Y'all did a great job. Israel, hallelujah. Lincoln. Hallelujah, Josh, appreciate y'all, hallelujah. Okay, so let's look at 1815, let's get cranked up right away. Um, the Bible says, and Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus unto the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. Then said that the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Most high God, we thank you for allowing us to be here. We pray that you would just inhabit your word and allow your word to make us better people, God. Better fathers and mothers and better employees and employers. Help us, God, to be better husbands and wives, God. 
be better parents. And Lord, just in every area of our lives, allow your word to just go in and make us look more like you, be more like you, to build more like you and not to destroy. Bless us, O King. And bind the enemy out at every angle, every turn. We just pray that you would be with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so saints, last time I was up here, we started a series talking about uh, Peter's denial. Peter's denial, if you remember, when he denied our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this was arguably the worst mistake in Peter's life. Peter did some tremendous things, great things, walked on water, healed so many people, just a, a wonderful soldier for the Most High God who would come in and even lead the church afterwards. But, but we're looking at probably one of the worst mistakes in his life. And, 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 we, and we related that to the fact that we all make mistakes. Anybody done made some mistakes? Amen. We all make mistakes, and, and, and hallelujah, and, and we just were saying that we can't be too hard on Peter because we got dark times that we can reflect on, times and things that we're not proud of, that we said, that we did, that we participated in, and it could be before Christ, it could be during even uh, your salvation experience, amen, because there's none righteous, no, not one. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so by examining Peter's denial, amen, we'll be examining the anatomy of a fall. All right. What does it look like? What happens when we fall, when we when we do things that don't please God and we study in it? Amen. Because if we study the thing and how it happened, then we can stop it from happening again. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. So it's not to bring condemnation. Amen. But it's to bring liberation, amen. because if you know why you fell, amen then it's less likely that the devil be able to pull the wool over your eyes again. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. And it wasn't just Peter that fell when he denied Christ. Look at David with Bathsheba. Look at Moses and his anger problems, uh, 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 murdering the Egyptian. Look at, look at Abraham who lied, Jacob who deceived, Jonah who refused to go where God had told him to go. We can look at a lot of our patriarchs and see imperfection there. But what we also see is, is that when they made their greatest mistakes, amen, God forgave them. They analyzed why they fell. And they never fell like that again. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen. And so that's why we're here. We want to study the anatomy of Peter's fall. Just, just looking at it. Amen. And hopefully glean some things from it. Now juxtapose with, alongside the fall, we have the fall that's happening while we read in chapter 18. And simultaneously, we have the trial of Jesus going on. And so it's like a good movie. John, the, 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 the gospel writer, he's talking about Peter's denial, and then he breaks off and goes to the scene of the trial, and Jesus, Jesus is up in that handcuff, and then he breaks off and goes right back to the denial in the courtyard. Amen? And so it's happening just like that as John is writing. And Bible scholars say, well, why did John do it like that? Just tell one story and then tell the other. And the reason is, number one, is because that's the way it was happening. While Jesus was being tried, Peter was denying him in the courtyard. So that's the first reason why it's, it's juxtaposed like that, going in and out of scenes. Second reason, and more importantly, John, by the means of the Holy Spirit, wanted to show us that while, while Peter was committing the worst mistake of his life, Jesus was dying for that mistake. Are you hearing me up in here? Happening at the same time, Peter was, Jesus was dying for Peter's worst mistake in his life. And we'll see that while Peter was, was stinking it up, making mistake after mistake, Jesus was doing everything right. Amen. Everything right. Amen. Everything right. His righteousness in exchange for our sins. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> Amen. And it's not just Peter's sin he was dying for. He was dying for my sins, and he was dying for your sins. He was paying for Peter's sins simultaneously, but chronologically, he was paying for our sins in advance. Anybody hear me up in here? 
Before you was born, he was given that blood to pay for the sins that you would commit. And we told the story of the mama who had paid for her son's dinner in advance. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you remember, Peter failed for a few reasons. Peter failed, one, because he didn't understand the ways of God. Remember, we said that Peter, while Jesus was attempting to make his way to the cross, Peter was always trying to stop him from dying on the cross. Peter just wanted to be by Jesus. Wherever Jesus was, Jesus walking in the water, I want to walk in the water too. Wherever Jesus was, Peter wanted to be. And now we hear Jesus saying, Peter, I'm about to go to the cross. Peter like, no, it ain't going to happen. I'll die for you. All the rest of these, these folks out here, they ain't going to die for you. All of them could forsake you, but I'm never going to forsake you. And remember, Jesus looked at him and laughed and said, listen, this night, before the rooster crow, how many times? Three times. Before the rooster crow, you're going to deny me three times. And, 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 and that's what Jesus told him. Second reason Peter fell was because he did not understand his own weaknesses. He was very proud. He didn't understand that even with all of his burly strength and everything else that Peter had, that Peter still had some weaknesses on the inside. You can't come tell God what you never going to do. All right? All right? You got to say, God, say the same. God, with your help. Because all of us got weaknesses, and Peter didn't understand his weaknesses. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before fall. And we all have to remember that we just all flesh and blood. We just all uh, 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 jars of clay. And but for the grace of God, we wouldn't be where we are right now. We wouldn't have what we have right now. Hallelujah. Listen, it's all by the grace of Almighty God. And Peter forgot that momentarily. No, no bad on him. We all can get the big head. So he up in that God, I'll never. Jesus, I'll never. I'll never. And Jesus is like, boy, you don't know what you're saying. You don't know what you're saying. If the devil get his hands on you, hallelujah, without me, huh? he going to sift you like wheat, Peter. All right? All right? So Peter failed, amen, because he didn't understand the ways of God. He didn't understand his own weaknesses. And so as we relate that and apply that to us, we got to understand God's ways are hard in our ways. And we got to understand we're not as tough and strong as we think we are. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen? <laughs> hallelujah. Peter also failed, lastly, we covered last time, because he did not pray. Remember in the garden, Jesus was praying, and he told Peter, listen, he said, I'm going over here to pray. A stone cast away. He said, y'all pray, lest you enter into temptation. And we saw a parallel with prayer, that prayer is a mighty, mighty grace of God, a weapon of God given to us, amen. And when you pray, hallelujah, you rarely, I said, praying men don't sin. But sinning men don't pray. Because prayer is like, a, is like a kryptonite to sin. When you pray the mornings before you go out or you praying in your car on your way to work, it's certain things that's not going to happen in your day because you done filled your day up with prayer. Amen? Amen? It's like prayer goes before you. It goes before you. It goes in the roadways that you're going in, the offices you're going in. It goes in the meetings before you're going in. And so listen, hallelujah, you can't look at God and say, God, I'm too busy to pray. One of the old prayer warriors say, I'm so busy, hallelujah, I have to pray. Anybody hear me up here? I got so much to do, so many meetings, so many appointments, so many different people, huh, that I can't even, I can't start my day without prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. And Peter didn't do that because we saw when Peter was supposed to be praying, Peter was sleeping. Huh? How we say that in Lafayette? Peter was do-do. Do-do. Drew all his mind. Peter was do-do. And Jesus said, oh, God, y'all sleeping? It's the hour of darkness. It's Satan hour. He... Mm. That's why Peter fell. And so... This morning, we continue on our little series, and we're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to try to finish it, but we'll see. We're going we're gonna to check our time and make sure that we're we in a lot more with time, amen. But, but let's get to our fourth point, all right? Peter failed because he did not understand the danger of hanging with the world. The danger of hanging with the world. You know I got something for you today. You know I got something for you today, Amen. If we look at John 18, 18, look what it says. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals 
for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. And this is by way of revelation. This is by way of, of using the word to glean some things out of it. Amen. We see Peter standing with the people who actually arrested Christ. Standing with the people who were unsaved, unbelievers. The people who didn't have a like faith like him. And Peter was standing with them, warming himself by the fire. I got news for you. If Peter was never out there with them, warming himself by the fire, he would have never denied our Lord. Are you with me here so far? All right? What's the revelation? There are some people that you are hanging with presently that make you more susceptible to a fall, that make you more susceptible to displeasing your God. And by revelation, that's what Peter found himself in. You see, we think we're strong enough to hang around with just anybody. When the truth of the matter is, is that certain people we shouldn't be around. All right? You got people that's good for you, but they also have people that's bad for you. As you get older, amen, hallelujah, when you're young, you could eat just about anything. But as you get older, your body starts to change. <laughs> Certain fools just don't agree with you. And I want to take that revelation and bring it into certain relationships. There's certain people that just don't agree with your spirit. Their energy, their vibe, the way that they're going, amen. It just don't do you good. And whether you know it or not, the more you hang with them, the more you talk with them, the more you visit their social media sites and, 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 and walk with them, so to speak, amen the worse your walk becomes, the further from God you become and, until you get to that place where you deny your Lord like Peter did all together. Anybody hear me up in here? All right, all right. Listen, 1 Corinthians 15, tells us clearly. It says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Now this is the King James, so I'm gonna break that down for you. And then we're going to put it in a new translation. But let's break down the King James, going back to the Greek words behind this. He said, be not deceived. What does that mean, Pastor? Don't fool yourself. Amen. Don't fool yourself. Because if you think you can hang with anybody with no repercussions, you only clowning yourself. All right? He said, be not deceived. Watch this. Evil communication. Does he mean just talking on the phone? No. That Greek communication right here is hamalia. Say that with me, hamalia, all right? That's the Greek word there. And it means evil company, evil companionship. It means evil communion. It's people that you're rolling with, chilling with, hanging with, that's not following the same God that you're following and doing the same things that you're doing. He said, be not deceived, that evil company, companionship, communion, watch what it does, it corrupts. Pastor, what does that word corrupt mean in the Greek? The word corrupt means to destroy, but it's to destroy slowly. It's to destroy like rust destroys iron, like moths destroy clothing. It's a destruction that's imperceivable that you got to pay close attention to, that, it, that, that by the time you see it, it's already gone. What is this scripture telling me? You got people around you that's killing you softly. <laughs> killing you softly and you love them and you think they love you hallelujah but listen they're not just your friends they're on assignment they're on assignment they're on a mission and some of them on a mission knowingly and some of them unknowingly and they're here to stop you from being great not everybody you think good for you is good for you <laughs> be not deceived evil communication watch this corrupts good manners now what is this good manners we talking about eating at a table with our posture right <laughs> what is that good manners putting our table our, our, our handkerchief on our lap huh no we're not talking about manners like that huh that word manners is ethos in the greek say that with me ethos in the greek 
And it means good morals, knowing right from wrong, good habits, things that you do to be successful in life. To, to, to build companies, to, to work well and be a supervisor on the job. It's, it's good morals, good habits, but watch this, good character. Amen. Now let's put it all together. Amen. Don't be fooled, child of God. Evil company, companionship, and communion destroys slowly and unperceivably good morals, habits, and character. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. We breaking it down. We breaking it down. And when you look at the NIV, the NIV puts it simple, but I wanted to do the Greek work with you. The NIV tells us clearly, it says bad company, hallelujah, uh, Sambu, put it up there, hallelujah, don't be misled, it says. Bad company corrupts good character. Let me tell you, some of y'all hanging around bad company, y'all. And ain't nothing hurts our people more than good people being too close to bad people. All right? All right? Too close to bad people. Amen. I heard a story of a pigeon and a swan. All right? Y'all know me and my stories. The swan was beautiful. The swan helped every animal out in the forest. The swan was just a great person. All right? One day a hunter was in the forest. And he was hunting, cutting up, and he got hot. He was tired. He must have been in Louisiana. He was hot. He almost passed out. And there the swan go helping out. Swan got over and began to flap his wings and cool him off. I'm talking about butcher air condition cool off. I'm talking about, <laughs> listen, began to cool him off. Just, just cool him off real good. That's the swan. The swan is just cooling him off. And the pigeon come by and the pigeon say, don't you know this is a hunter? He out here to kill us and to harm us. And he said, well, he might be out here to harm us, but I'm here to help him. And so I'm just going to cool him off. And the pigeon said, well, why are you cooling him off? I'm going to do something. I'm going to cool him off, all right? So the pigeon went above his head. <laughs> and the pigeon, the pigeon released. The pigeon released on the hunter. And the hunter woke up with all kind of pigeon, all, all pigeon stuff on him. Woke up and got mad, fiery mad. Took his gun, and the first thing he saw was the swan. Shot and killed the swan. Good people hanging with bad people in the wrong place. At the wrong time. All right? All right? Don't let that be you. Young people, listen, you don't know how many people I done put in the ground. And the funerals I done did. Of, 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 of young girls, look, look, on their way to college, going on the ACT, making good grades, but just, just with the wrong boy. With the wrong boy. I'm talking like, like this is true story. You got to be careful who you're rolling with. Because who you're rolling with is not always good for you. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen. Listen, we got to keep moving. And don't think this just applies to the, to the children here. Because our adults, you got to watch yourself too. You got things in your past that easily jump on you. See, two people with the same past really can't hang together too close. Because if my problem is doing gambling or my problem is, is, is I, had a, I had a bad drug problem, I ain't hanging with nobody that, that's in and out of that life. Because if they fall, I'm going to fall with, oh, okay, okay, we get it now. We get it, we get it. Okay, okay, we get it. Psalm 1-1, one, one, watch this. We got to understand that it's imperceivable and it happens slowly. See, in physical science, you learn about erosion, erosion. See, water just can't break a rock, like just, just throwing water on a rock, just one bucket of water on a rock. But if you put that same rock on the ocean shore and allow those waves over years and years of time to just keep beating that same rock, that same place, you'll come back and that rock will have a dent in it. Is it because of the strength of the water? No, it's because of the, 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 the frequency. The, you know, it just happened over and over again. Listen, I know you strong like that rock. But if you keep being placed in a bad situation, erosion is going to happen. Yes. Yes. Psalm 1, 1 teaches us this when it talks about the man. God's going to tell you about a man that's blessed. But at the same time, reading it inherently, you're going to find out about the man that's not blessed. He said, blessed is the man, watch this, that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, 
nor standing in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. I want you to watch the position of this man that's in this, 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 this verse. First, he's walking around uh, uh, ungodly, sinners, and scornful. The erosion begins to happen, and now he's standing. The erosion continues to happen, and now he's sitting. And that's just how evil company going to do you. You're going to walk by first and just won't pay attention. Next thing you know, you're going to walk by, and you're going to look, and now you'll be standing. Huh? Next thing you know, you're like Peter, huh, and you're sitting with him. All right? All right? And that's just what Peter does. Look at Luke twenty two fifty four. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. You see, he walking, but he kind of far away. That's how y'all all with the world and some of your friends. You, 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 you still connected, but you're, you're going to stay far. All right? All right? But look at the danger that John 18 and 18. And the servants and officers stood there who made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves. Peter went from following afar, watch this, and he stood with them and warmed himself. Luke twenty two fifty five. 55, the synoptic gospel says this. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and was set down together, Peter went from following the fall to standing with him. Peter sat down among them. You can have all the right intentions, but end up in a bad way. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? All right? You got to be careful with the world and the people of it. It will suck you in and make you deny the one who brought you. The scriptures I want to bring to your mind, call your attention before we move on, is Amos 3.3. 3. How can two walk together except they agree? I want you to uh, pay attention to James 4 and 4. Friendship with the world is enmity against our God. I want you to remember 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, I don't mean that we don't work with them, we don't love them. We visit their stores. We might exercise with them at the gym. But this, this yoke together means a bosom buddy companionship, a partnership in life, or either a marriage. All right? What are you saying, Pastor? Listen, you can't be too close with people that's going in the opposite direction of you. All right? How can two walk together except they agree? If you're trying to live a drug-free life, you can't be too close to somebody that's... You understand what I'm saying? If you're trying to live a faithful life to your spouse, you can't be too close to them, that single girl club that you was a part of. Y'all out there, where the party at? Y'all can't... That's not going to work anymore. Men, can I get an amen? Well, let's give something to the men now. You can't be out there with your boys out there like you used to. Out there jumping in the club doing... That's over with. That's over with. You can't walk with people like that no more. You, if they're not going the same direction as you, amen. amen, then you can't walk with them. Come on, give y'all some praise, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's important, amen, as you distance yourself from people of the world that's going to kind of just lead you in this negative way of life, self-destroying behavior, all right? It's going to be important as you give them the Heisman, all right, to go ahead and build yourself new relationships with like-minded people, Thank you, Lord. all right? Amen. People of faith, all right? And when I say faith, I don't just mean people of Philadelphia. I mean people in, uh, with the faith of Yahshua, Jesus Christ, people with the faith of our God, all right? That's what's most important because people with faith, they, they, we at least go in the same direction. We want to do the same thing. We want to do right. All right? And we might not believe everything, every nuance correctly, but it's the same God, and it's the same family. So shun the bad company, but accept the good company. All right? Now, while you accept the good company, understand, okay, that there's different levels to this. All right? Different levels to this. Okay? Uh, uh, everybody in church, uh, uh, you can't fellowship with. All right? Because certain personalities don't, uh, 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 how can I say this without offending too many people? Yeah, they don't match. Thank you, Minister. 
and, and, and y'all like, y'all like a cigarette light and gas sometimes. <laughs> y'all burning stuff down. So even amongst the faithful, we got to figure out which personalities can be and which ones lead, going to lead to stumbling. So that's one dynamic of it. The second dynamic of it is this, all right? It's important to find somebody a little bit ahead of you, all right? And it's important to find somebody a little bit behind you. That way you help out the church, all right? When you find somebody ahead of you, then you have something to strive for. They've been believing longer than you. They know no scripture. They, they understand the ways of God. And so you, you find somebody, amen, uh, uh, as a mentor in the faith. You need that. Every, every person needs that. All right? But as you find a mentor, look back as well. Because we got some new people that's coming in, younger believers, where you might not be able to mentor the person that's mentoring you, but you can mentor somebody else. And that's how we get, have this unbreakable chain, all right? Uh, there's a story about a guide horse and a blind horse. Yeah, I'm going to bring y'all another story. <laughs> and there was this guy, he was looking at a field, and he saw two horses. And from the distance, the two horses looked the same. He said, but as he got close, he noticed that one of the horses had a little golden bell on it, and the other horse was blind. And the blind horse didn't move unless the God horse moved. And every time the God horse moved, the little bell would ring. And the blind horse knew it was time to move. If it was nighttime, the God horse would go ahead and run in the barn. And the blind horse, old blind horse, would go ahead and go in the barn. If it was raining, same thing. If it was danger, same thing. You see, the man in the field, as he was looking at it, he saw the farmer. And the farmer said, listen, I could have got rid of the old horse. He was blind. I could have put him down, you know. But instead of getting rid of him, amen, I got him a younger horse. Hallelujah. That could see, that could hear, and that could be his guide. And they both kind of learn from one another. Amen. The moral of the story is, is that when we get older, and even when we make mistakes, Jesus. God don't put us down. Amen. All right? All right? All right? If we open our eyes closely, amen, hallelujah, he'll always put in our lives a guide horse. All right? All right? And in your life, you're either going to be one or the other. You're going to be a blind horse or a guide horse. And sometimes you're going to be both. To this group right here, you're going to be a blind horse. They're going to help you lead. All right? All right? To this other group, you're going to be a God horse because you done been through so much. Baby, I done been through all that. Let me show you how this really works. All right? And you just got to be ready for that, available for that. See, some of y'all in here, all y'all want to be is God horses. All you want to do is lead people. You're not humble enough to know that there's a greater than you present. All right? All right? And in every area, we're not strong on y'all. All right? I might be a guide horse in one area, but in another area, listen, somebody else is going to be able to teach me some things and help me out some things. You know, Bryce, Tyrone, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Mayor President Josh, you know, they can teach me some things. But in my area of strength, maybe I might be able to teach them some things. But you got to be humble enough in your relationships. Stay away from bad company. Get with good company recognize whether you're going to be a blind horse or a guide horse, and let's help each other out. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here we go. We're keeping on moving. Peter fell because he feared man more than he feared God. He feared man before he, more than he feared God. All right? Uh, in 1817, it says, Then the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, he, she said, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? And here's Peter's first denial. The damsel asked him, a little young girl asked him, are you one of Jesus' disciples? Peter said, I am not. Peter lied, y'all. All right, don't you act like you ain't lied before. <laughs> Peter lied. And worst of all, he not only lied, but he denied his Lord that he loved so much, loyal, 
And, and we'll find out that this right here broke Peter down mentally later. Jesus had to come and restore him personally because this fall messed Peter up. And some of y'all out here, you done did some things, hallelujah, and, and, and until the grace of God put, put, put oh God, ointment and, and let neosporin on that thing, listen, if you don't allow God to, to, to add his grace and his mercy to where you messed up, you'll be off mentally, you'll be messed up. All right? All right? But it's important to understand, y'all, hallelujah, that, that though we mess up, amen, uh, uh, our God still loves us. Come on, give y'all some praise, amen? So, whoo, so, so Peter messes up. Now, another reason why Peter messed up, why he lied, is because he was afraid. He was afraid. All right? He was afraid. And... Uh, He's out there. He had just tried to chop a man ear off. No, no, no. He didn't try. He chopped the man ears off, ear off. He was actually trying to split his head. He was trying to split his wig, like we say in the hood. He was trying to split his wig, you know. But Peter missed by the grace of God, cut the boy ear off. So Peter is, 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 is a criminal right here, all right? That's, that's attempted murder. Peter got charges. Some of y'all know about charges. Raise your hand. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Raise your hand if you got any warrants in the house. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. So, so, so Peter was afraid. So in, in Proverbs 29, 25, it says, The fear of man bringing a snare. The fear of man bringing a, a snare. When you're afraid, you're going to get yourself in more trouble than when you're not. Fear is a self-fulfilling prophecy. You could scare yourself into a bad situation. That's what he means, the fear of man working a snare. A snare is a trap. I watch so many people just be afraid of something, huh? And that fear itself puts them in, in the situation that they didn't want to be in. If you would just be courageous, if you would just be brave, if you would just trust God. And that's what the rest of the scripture says. But whoso put in his trust in the Lord shall be saved. All right. So fear is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Now, the truth of the matter is we all get afraid. All right. No matter if you're fighting, you, you, you're in war. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our mayor president, a veteran, amen, served our country well. Hallelujah. And, and, and so whether you're fighting, whether you're in war, everybody get afraid. All right. But it's what you do with that fear. Do you let it paralyze you? Do you let it make you do something wrong? Do you let it, amen, stop you from doing right? That's the decision. That's the valid decision we're in when fear overtake us. Now, the people who call courageous, they still experience the fear, but they don't allow the fear to stop them. Are you hearing me up in here? Amen. Peter got afraid, and instead of pursuing and pressing in, he lied. He lied. What was he afraid of? He say, then said, a damsel. That's a young girl. That might be somebody like Darla age. You see? There's a little girl. What's she doing out that late? I don't know. But that, that, there's a little girl. <laughs> Darla don't ever be out that late. <laughs> she out there and, and she asked Peter, aren't you with me? And Peter afraid. But it's a little girl, Peter. You know? It's a little girl. So Peter lied and he denied his Lord. All right. Now, at that moment, Bible scholars say, Peter, you should have left at that moment. When the first sign of sin come and trouble, all right, I lied. It's time to go. <laughs> but he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't leave. John 18, 25, and Simon Peter stood there and warmed himself. And they said therefore unto him, art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it again and said, I am not. All right. How many people know you could stay too long somewhere? All right? All right? Look at 1826. One of his servants, the high priest, watch this, uh, being a kinsman whose ear Peter cut off. Pastor, what that mean? You remember Malthus, the one Peter ear cut off his ear? Malthus' cousin was out there. And he, he looked at Peter, he said, didn't I see you in the garden? You know, wouldn't that you hit my cousin? 
That's how that was. He knew that was Peter. The Bible said, watch for the third time, Peter then denied again. That's the third time. Luke in the synoptic gospel say that Peter not only denied, but he started cursing. Hanging with the wrong people in the wrong place, full of fear, God made Peter lose his religion. Peter, Peter not only lying, now he's cursing them. Now, at least that happened in the garden. Some of y'all that happened at McDonald's and Popeye's. <laughs> All right? We got to work on that. The anatomy of a fall. So Peter started cursing. Now, look what happens, y'all. Luke twenty two sixty. Watch this. We, we, we kind of come in to, to, to our, our, our final little point. But watch this. Luke twenty two sixty. Peter, this, this is how Luke said it. Peter said, man, I know not what thou sayest. He fronting on the, on the cousin. I don't know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he yet spake, while he was speaking, the cock crew, the rooster. What the rooster did? That's what the rooster did. While he getting mad, while he cursing, while he denying for the last time. Huh, evangelist Brian? Huh, huh? Why he denied for the last time? The rooster crew, crowed. And, and the Lord turned. Now the Lord is on trial. Peter is in the courtyard. Peter had just talked that noise. I'll never forsake you. Though I die with you, all the rest of these fools going to forsake you. But I'm never going to do it. Jesus is on trial. Jesus heard the rooster. Huh? And look what the Bible says. He turned from his trial, and he looked upon Peter. What y'all think that did to Peter, y'all? And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said unto him, Before the cock grow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out. He should have left earlier. <laughs> now you want to leave. <laughs> you could have just denied him once. And he went out and wept. Bitterly. It touched him deep. It touched him deep. It was the worst mistake he had ever made, y'all. But we're going to see the love of Christ restoring Peter. Amen. And John, he denied him three times, and Jesus is going to restore him three times. Come on, give y'all some praise up in this place. So Peter cried. Now, here we go. We're winding down towards our little end section. It's not a point, but I just want to just bring it. He says, now while, I have my note, now while Peter was failing miserably, Jesus was conquering victoriously. Peter didn't understand the ways of God. If y'all could just put my points back up. Peter didn't understand the ways of God. But Jesus not only understood the ways and the will of the Father, he was in complete submission to the will of the Father. Doing what Peter could, couldn't do. Doing always what we can't. All right. Remember, Peter didn't understand his own weaknesses. Huh? Uh, so he depended on himself. Jesus depended completely on the Father. You know? Peter didn't pray. Jesus was constantly in prayer. Praying even in the Garden of Gethsemane before the crucifixion. Peter mixed with the world and was with people he shouldn't have been around. Jesus kept himself separate from the world. He was wholly harmless and undefiled. Peter feared man, denying to little girls and, and officers and servants out in the foyer. Jesus was bold as a lion. We looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus was, I am he. Let these go. Take me. Everything Peter did wrong, Jesus did right. You see? He did it on behalf of Peter, and he did it on behalf of us. Come on, give y'all some praise. <laughs> that is why, Philadelphia, he is our Savior, and we are not the Savior. That's why he's our Savior, and no other man is our Savior. All right? Because he's the only one, as Hebrews 4.15 says, who was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. All right? 
He takes Peter's denials and he nails them to his cross and, and makes it through the things that Peter couldn't make it through. All right? Uh, 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 musicians, y'all can slowly make your way up, amen, as we begin to wind down this particular sermon, you know. Uh, Phil was up here, and he was talking about how God loves us and how he loves us pretty much in, in spite of us and how he's been loving us since we were in our mother's womb, amen, before we was born and everything, amen. And, uh, and, and, and this is our last story. Musicians, I'm running out of material. Y'all can make y'all way on up. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is our last story right here. It's a, it's a story of a, of a beautiful woman and a, and a soldier, amen. And, uh, and the soldier uh, was going off to war. And before he was going to war, he, he was real nervous. He, he wanted to propose uh, to this beautiful woman. Uh, she was not only beautiful, but came from a good family, wealthy and just educated. And so he was, he was like, man, I, I don't even know if she's going to want me. But, but he said, I'm going to try it and, and see. Uh, uh, well, it, it, it worked. He proposed, and she was waiting, and, and she was so happy uh, to be uh, his fiance. Um, and he's about to leave for war. They have a good night together. They, they eat. The families love each other. This thing is looking real good. Uh, the soldier goes off to war and uh, leaves with the promise, I'm going to be back and I'm going to marry you. We're going to have a great life together, children, house, everything. But while he's off at war and, 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 and doing his thing for, for his country, uh, the, his fiance, the beautiful woman, uh, gets into a terrible accident, all right? Terrible accident. Uh, she wakes up in the hospital like weeks later. And when she wakes up, amen, uh, uh, they notice that she uh, has all kind of injuries and scars to her face. And not only is her face scarred up, but, but she uh, 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 incurred some brain damage. Uh, and it was the part of the brain that controls the muscles in her face, amen. And so it was not only scarred, but her face was, was disfigured. And so she looked in the mirror and she was like, oh, my God. All my hopes, all my dreams are, are gone now. You know, how in the world he going to ever love me and like me when I look like this? And so uh, uh, she uh, tells her mom and tells her dad, listen, I'm going to release uh, uh, my fiancé. I'm going to release him uh, because he can't possibly marry somebody that looks like this. And so uh, uh, all of his letters while he was away, all of his calls while he was away, uh, she was dodging him and saying, listen, I don't want, I want him to forget about me because there's no way that we can ever be happy together because of the way I look, because of my scars. And so, hallelujah, uh, 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 one day uh, uh, some time had passed and, and one day she receives a, a wedding invitation in the mail and her parents come to her bed and they bring her the wedding invitation. And she saw on the address, it was, it was, the, it was the soldier, it was the man. And he, he was like, oh, God, wow. And she was like, oh, God, wow. I knew he was going to get married. I still love him, but I'm happy for him. And so she cried as she looked at the wedding invitation. But she said, well, let me open it and just see who he's marrying, you know. And so she opens it, and on the invitation is his name. But there's also her name on it. And so she gets, she gets all flooded and she's like, this must be a mistake. It must be a mistake. Mom, what's going on? Daddy, what's going on? And the soldier walks in with his uniform on. He walks in and she's hiding her face. No, no, no. Get out of here. Listen, I don't want you to see me like this. No, I don't. I, no, listen, I release you. I release you. And the soldier gets down on his knees and he says, listen, I know all you done been through. I see your scars. In fact, your mom and your daddy sent me pictures of everything. They kept me informed of everything that was going on with you. I was praying for you. I was with you in spirit, even though I wasn't with you in body. I was there with you. And he gets down on one knee and he says, will you still marry me? Will you still marry me? She begins to cry and say, how could you love me? How could you love me the way I look? All my scars. All my scars. The soldier looks at her and he says, 
I'm in love with you. And you still look the very same to me with all of your scars. All of your scars. All of your scars. And that is God's love for us. He fell in love with us, y'all, in eternity past. Jeremiah says, God tells us, he says, yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love. A love with no beginning and a love with no end. And in the middle of his love, we make mistakes like Peter. We go the right way, we go the wrong way. We do some terrible things. But one thing it doesn't change is the agape love of God for us. He tells you this morning, I've always loved you. And a few scars, a few bumps and bruises don't change who you are to me. He says like that soldier told his fiance, I never fell in love with your face, I fell in love with your heart. Woo! <laughs> That's how God loves you this morning. That's how he loves you this morning. So while we analyze Peter's fall, we understand. We understand all that we talked about about Peter's fall. He, 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 he didn't understand the ways of God. He was too proud. He didn't understand his own weaknesses. We talked about how he fell because he didn't pray. We talked about how he fell because he didn't understand. I'm hanging with the wrong people. The dangers of the world. He fell, a hey, God, because glory to God. Here, with my five, five fit and final point? Somebody remember it because I don't remember it. Let's see here. He fell because he, I don't know. What is it? He feared, I'm just testing y'all, he feared man. He feared man more than God. And you might have failed him for the above mentioned reasons. But he still knows your name and he still loves you. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ushers, if you can open up the altar, amen. We'll have a little altar time of prayer, amen. We're going to pray for you. Uh, uh, also, amen, uh, if you want to know Yahshua as your personal Lord and Savior, you've heard how he loved you in spite of you. You've heard how he was doing everything right while Peter was doing everything wrong. He did that same thing for you. And if you want to be saved, it's easy. You admit to God that you're a sinner. You believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And you confess him as your Lord and Savior. You call upon him. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the grace of God. So while we have this altar call, those who want to make sure their salvation, they'll be able to come up and pray with me. But maybe you already saved, you already, you already forgiven, you already born again. But you got some mistakes you're not proud of. You're going to come to this altar as well, and we'll pray for your restoration. We'll pray that God will cover you with his mercy and his grace. Not for you to keep doing the same thing over and over again, but so that God will take that, forgive that, you learn from that, and you get stronger from it, and better from it. Amen. So we're going to do that. And lastly, we're going to, after we do that, we'll stretch our hands out towards our mayor president. Pray that God will bless him on his second term. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So here we go, here we go. The altar is open. You can make your way if you feel led. The altar is open. Come on, come on. Come on and pray with your pastor. Come on and pray. Hallelujah. Whatever y'all want to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you.
thank you for walking with me. Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you tell me. Thank you. I am. Walking with us, God. Oh, how you talk with me. Oh, how you tell me. I am your I am your own. Okay, all right. Let's pray. Everybody, in the sound of my voice, just imagine yourself before the throne of God. His grace and His mercy. And it's not the prayer, it's what you mean in your heart right now. Just say, Most High God, thank you for loving me before the foundation of the world. Thank you for your everlasting love. I admit, like Peter, I've made some mistakes, but I thank you that you are gracious and merciful. I believe you died on the cross for all of my sins. You were buried in the grave, and on the third day, you rose with all power. Lord. Forgive me, Forgive me and save me and, save me. and, use, me and use me for your glory. For your glory. Make, me a better person. Make me a better person and help me to grow and, help me to grow. and, not, to fall. and not to fall over and over again. Over and over again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give y'all some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. A couple of more things. Turn your hands towards our mayor president over them. Hallelujah. As a church, the Bible says, where two or more agree, it shall be done. The Bible says that whoever blesses God's people, that God will bless them. And our friend Josh has been a blessing to your pastor. and He's been a blessing to this church. Hallelujah. It's little things he do that he don't even think that we notice. He keep that city grass in front of our church looking stellar. He don't think I noticed that. That's him doing that. He, that's him doing that. I noticed that. I noticed what he doing. He doing all that to help us out. And the scripture can't be broken. When you bless a child of God, you got a blessing coming your way. So we stand in agreement. God bless our mayor president, Josh Gillery. Bless him with wisdom, with knowledge, with favor, with discernment. Keep him away from the wrong people and put good people in his path. Allow him, God, hallelujah, not only to win this next, hallelujah, election, but allow him to win it in style, to win it in fashion, to overcome greatly, God. Let him not be worried about it. Let him have peace about it because God, you promote one and you put another down. We pray, God, Glory. that you bless him. And we pray that he be a friend of Philadelphia, a friend of your people, a friend of the south side and the north side, a man for, the, for all people, God. We pray, God, that you use him, O King, not to be a canal builder to separate our city, but a bridge builder to unify our people, white, Black, Latino, Asian, and everybody else, God. So bless him now. Let him have the blessing of your people upon him now. As you bless Cornelius, bless Josh Gilliman. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Victory, because your power is with 
unto you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and bless you with shalom peace. Shalom peace in your body, your mind, and your family and everywhere you go. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Love y'all. Be blessed, my people. <laughs> Love you too. Good to see you. Hallelujah. No fire can burn me. No battle it's hurt me, no mountain can stop me, cause you hold my hand. He loves you. I'm walking he loves you, Mr. in a victory, with your power is within me. No giant can defeat me, cause you hold my hand. No fire can burn me, no battle.
said it, we believe it. Cause if he said it, we believe it. If you said it, we believe it. Of your word, if you said it, we believe it. Da, 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 da. If you said it, we believe it. Cause your word, man, of your word, we have this confidence. You finish what you started. God, you have never felt. You won't start with me. Present, present in every step. Patient and patient in every heartache. God, you have never.
speaks up. Keep on talking to me. Keep on talking to me. Cause he speaks of me. He speaks of me. He speaks over me. Keep on, he keeps on. He speaks over me. Yeah, yeah. He speaks over me. Yeah, yeah. He speaks over.
What's going on, Philadelphia Online family? How you guys doing? Hey, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for chilling with us, man. Staying on, on the live stream. If you're still there, I want you to, man, put some fire flames on the chat right now, man, because it, it was an awesome word on awesome. today from start to finish, from worship to all the way to the very end. It was just, it was just phenomenal today. And worship. That's what I want to talk the about. The men. And the worship. Was I, that, I noticed all right? that. I was working the camera, and I was like, wait a minute. Uh -huh. It's just the brothers up there. And I looked, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. they did that. They, they did that. They did awesome, yeah. man. Highly talented, anointed brothers up there, man, worshiping God. Yes. That was powerful. Yes. Really powerful. So we're going to get to, to a family up here, man. We're going to just talk with them for a moment, man. Yeah. Tell everybody your name and how long you've been coming to Philly. Um, my name is Isaiah Hilaire. Um, my grandmother and I started coming to Philly about seven years ago. Come on, man. Wow. Yeah. And your name? My name is Kai Hilaire, and same here. My grandmother brought us here. Since then, we've been following her journey. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm Travis Hilaire, and this is my two kids. And same Aye. thing, my mom started, and my brother, and we just follow the footsteps and try to do the right thing. Yeah. Well, thank God for mom, huh? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, man, anything from the message from today, Minute, that stuck out to you guys that you guys maybe want to share with the people of God? I think for me, whenever we think about life and you think about being a good person, you go through so many stages of what does a good person look like. And for me, watching pastor just minister and really showcase what it means to be a, a true man of God is huge for me. And he talked about the swan today, and that was something that really resonated with me because sometimes... We, we try to continue to do the right thing, do the right thing, even whenever someone may be doing something wrong to us. And in those situations, you never know what the outcome is. So, but if you know and you're faithful to God, regardless of what the outcome is, he's going to continue to be faithful to you. The word is never returned and void. So I just think that was what resonated the most with me today. Amen, amen. I've been enjoying Pastor giving all those, those stories he's been doing, man, lately. Yeah, like, it's a, been, like, got me yeah. all teary-eyed every time he's just throwing out there, man. Especially that last one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Amen, amen. <laughs> a woman of God, you had something? Okay, what I took away from it is when he said that we all fall and not looking at it to where it's, that's my fault and that's who I am. It's more so saying that's what I was and it's moving forward to what I'm going to be. It's good. It's good. Yeah. And mine was the, uh, the story about the bridge, the two brothers and the bridge. Yeah, yeah. And it's family, it's cousins, it's friends, it's, you know, black and white. And right, right. The different side of the community is like, yes. it's really the bridge is where they need to come up. Yeah. Use the wood wisely. Use the wood wise. I like that. I like yeah, it. man. Yeah. That was good. That was good. I enjoyed yeah. that story too, man. Um, and and, and it kind of makes me think about, I know, you know, the separation of like, you know, the city sometimes. And sometimes we can think, man, us being separated is a bad thing. But I think, you know, we should be wherever we're comfortable, where we are. You know, we're going to be comfortable with our own people. And they may be comfortable right. with their, their people. But the right. thing is, let's, let, let's make the side look, look, let it both look good. You know? I think, I think when you say that, that was one of, one, another part that really resonated with me is that we shouldn't be so focused on one side and the other side, but unity with all. Yeah. We're one Lafayette. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. But we are the ones who separate and say north side, south side, all of these things. But in God's eyes, we're all his children. So yeah. we're, it's one Lafayette. That's right. That's right. One. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Awesome word today, man. It was, it was, it was good. I enjoyed it, man. So thank you guys for sharing thank your heart you with us so today, much. man. Beautiful thank you guys. family. Yes. That's what happened too. It, uh, when you say you want to take care of your family and take care of your kids, and what side of town you want to live on, uh, on the good side or the bad side, and it's like with the the, the water dividing it, it's like what side what side of the bridge you want to be on. Right. And if it's all the same. It's, shouldn't matter. It shouldn't you matter. Should be able to yeah. Be successful successful on either side. Either side. That's right. You know, it's your choice. Yeah. But the way it, they make it is where you gotta choose a side right now and it shouldn't have to. It shouldn't have it to shouldn't be. Have to. It's true. It's true, man. Yeah, yeah. We won people and uh, you know, the Lord made all of us, but he all he did make us all different. 
did. You know, and we can embrace our differences and still embrace other people's differences. Right. You know, and have that bridge, man. Because I like passed to say we can learn from both sides. We That's can learn it. from each other. Yeah, but and not let's not neglect better. a side. Let it all be built up. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know. Amen. 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 Appreciate Amen. you guys, man. Yes. Absolutely. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for Thank y'all having so us. Much. Amen. Thank y'all. Uh huh. Glory to God, y'all. Glory to God. Also, message, man. Yes. Um, Peter's denial, the anatomy of a fall, part two, man. Part two. Uh, last Sunday was awesome, and, and again, the continuation of it just, was just great today, man. Yeah. Really great, start to finish. Um, I know for me, as they, they come on up, um, when they were talking about that, that watch who you hang with, you know, that is a big, big, big deal. That is a big deal. Um, being in the wrong crowd, you know. Yeah, because, you know, you hear the stories all the time. It's always the one. Well, he was never into all that. He was never into all that. Yeah. Oh, he got, what happened? What happened? And that's the things that happens Yeah. when you hang with the wrong crowd. And always could be like that one moment, that one drive that you decided to go do it. That, Normally, that you wouldn't have went and go do it. Yes. And then. You're caught up. You're caught up. You're caught, caught up. up. So. Yeah got some young folks with us today so talk with us man tell us your name and how long y'all been coming to philly and um also just what you got for the message yeah um my name's kaisley and i really don't know i've just been coming as long as my mom's coming i just okay. not been here since got I was you here, yeah so. no it's good that's cool that's cool amen um my name is kylie i've been coming since i was 11 with my um godparents yeah. but then i just started coming by myself probably about like maybe four years ago yeah three, four years ago okay so, yeah. awesome awesome right. awesome so so what I most took away from the word, um, what I could take away, I was in the sound booth. Um, so what he was talking about, who you hang around and how he spoke about Peter. So I got like, Peter, he only stayed with him, how he stayed from afar, but he was in a good amount of length to still catch off their vibes. So it was more so, he started like, is when you're hanging around somebody, and you like you know how they act you know they probably have anger issues you know they probably have like a negative mindset and you try and set yourself apart from it yet you're still conjoined at the hip with them somehow it could be their your sister it could be your brother it could be anybody but as long as you're still in that length way you could be as far as you can or you could be across the river you'll still catch their vibe as long as you're around them mm, it could be on, their man. friends it could be their mom as long as you're in that vicinity and you can deny it all you want but once you start to catch on you'll start you might start like like losing your patience you might start to get aggravated with the people mm. and if you don't realize that in the mind if you don't realize that you won't be able to save yourself from it come on now that is so wise that is the yes. truth and when you were speaking i heard the word proximity mm -hmm. your proximity with people how close you're going to be with how far you got to you need to stay away you, you burn because when you hang with people, you will you will behave like them. Whether it's good or bad, whoever you hang with, that's what you are going to become. It rubs off. It rubs off. It the good, the bad. But a lot of times, if it's a bad it. person, the, the, the bad rubs off so easily. <laughs> it's the bad stuff. It's the bad stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but, but the, you know, you want to hang out with good people. Yeah. You really do. You really do. And, even, and for the young people that are out there that may be listening, or even maybe the parents, man, Focus on, be, be attentive to who your child's friends are. Absolutely. Please. Absolutely. Like, that is so important. That is so, so important. Because, you know, they're at school and, and they're making friends or are they, they, I don't know. That school stuff is only for a little while. Like, you know, but, but they can make life transforming decisions based upon friends and it could just be just destructive. Yes. It, it really can. Yes. So. Watch your children, friends. That's all I got to say. Go ahead. Um, so to <laughs> on what she said, um, as a young believer, I actually had to 
distance myself from some old friends um, before I was saved. Wow. And so I didn't have any explanation for them as to why I had to do that. So, um, you know, being new to my faith, I was like, you know what, I still love you, but I couldn't explain it. I couldn't put it into words. But now it's like, yeah, we're on two different paths. I still love you and I still want the best for you. I'm still going to pray for you. But at the end of the day, God has something different for me. You know, I have to walk in my purpose. So um, to expound on what you said, that was really good what you said. Um, I agree with pretty much everything. But then also we were looking at what Peter did and it was like, oh, Peter did this, this and this. And I probably, I but most likely did uh -huh. this, most this, of this. Yes. But then there's yeah. always that but God, like but the grace. Yes, oh. this happened. But so just to know that we're redeemed, just to know that we're loved and we're saved and understanding that God wants the best for us and he's always going to be rooting for us. It's just like you have a purpose. If you don't know your actual purpose, you have a purpose. That's you right. know, we're living for God's love. So I just I'm grateful for that. Just walking in my gratitude for sure. Amen. 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 Well said. Very well said. I want to had a question for you as you were talking. I was just thinking, you know, where did you get the strength from to be able to say you wanted to draw that line in the sand? What made you? Yeah. Okay, so that was, that was actually really hard for me. Um, that was actually my best friend since like maybe kindergarten. Um, oh, and wow. so um, I did love her, but then at a point in time, I'm like, what you're doing, I'm not okay with it. Um, where you're going, I, that's not where I want to go. You know, I know that God has so much better for me. My future is bright. I Come know on. that. Not saying that hers wasn't, but it's just that the choices that she made, I had to be strong. And yeah. so um, I actually, it was kind of like a, a straight cut. It wasn't weaning myself off. It was a straight cut. So yeah. it was hard, I would say, for the both of us. And for her, she didn't understand. But now I can explain to her why. Yeah. Before, I didn't know how to explain why. Yeah. But um, understanding that God has something better for me. You know, I have... Like I said, a purpose to fulfill, you know, and yeah. that's just, God, that was my calling, you know. So I definitely had to let that go, and my life has did a complete 180. Um, I would say that I'm definitely at peace. I'm happier. Um, I have joy in my heart, you know. Amen. God is literally elevating me. And I knew that that was the issue because whenever I removed myself, I, my elevator went all the way up. Glory to God. I the was weight. stuck at a point in the time. My elevator off. went all the way up. Yes. So yes. I knew that this was not a mistake. This was not a bad choice. This is what God had for me. So. Lord, God. Somebody That's needed to hear that. Yeah, somebody yep. did because yeah. that just shows when you give up something for God, He gives you so much more. Right. So that's just Lord. proof that he always has something better. Know, always. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. And I want to um, add on to like, would you say like? cutting that off is like because instead of weaning like if you wean them off it's kind of still allowing them to backpack off of you yes. and you don't want that to become a monitoring spirit if you like where they just want to concern themselves with you just to say they know you yeah and mm. so um it's another thing like even if you keep yourself away from them it still things can still happen that like burden off of them to you mm. and it can jump onto you and it's more so as you can't expect yourself to heal in a place that made you sick in the first place. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good. It, it's so unbelievable how things can happen so quick. Yes. Things can jump yes. on you just from the environment you're in. And that's just having to watch. That's, and that's all you can do. Like, as long as you're able in the mind as long as you're able to know what the enemy's tactics are know where your loyalty lies with the lord and with whoever you're concerning yourself with then you should be golden no? amen amen pastor amen. about that, that erosion you know we may be they may think that you're a rock but hey if it constantly is the same thing over and over and over again it's gonna it's gonna rub off yeah. it's gonna rub the good off, has so to suffer step for away. the bad that's what i was told amen. in school all the time so I mean, you're gonna eventually become that. So, you might want to remove yourself. That's like that. right. That's right, man. Thank y'all so much, man. This was yeah, good, man. Florida awesome guy. Florida guy. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah, man. Thank you all. Powerful, man. Look, our Philadelphian youth, man. They, they, they are. They strong, man. Our Wise. future is bright. Yes. Our yes, future man. is bright. So, yes. Absolutely. Hey. Oh man, we got y'all. We got a special family yeah. up here, y'all. I'm telling you, I tell you what, man. We got the hunts, y'all. Hey, Lord. Yeah. Lord, Malvo, you fresh, by the man, way. I man, just man, my, my wife helped me out. I don't man. know if we can go to camera too and just catch <laughs> no, y'all. No, 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 right <laughs> man, glory to God, y'all. So, awesome message today, man. What's something that um first of all, let me tell you everybody your names and how long y'all been coming to Philly, man? Brother Brandon Hunt. I've been coming for a little bit over a decade now. <laughs> Hello. Um, Abigail, um, 
husband, um, I think, what, maybe about eight, nine years now. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, we Amen. married by eight, nine. Yeah? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your anniversary? Uh, March 14th. Okay, look. He was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. I'll put that. you on the spot. I'll put you on the spot. I don't know a number so, that good. Look, y'all, um, today's message, Peter's um, denial, anatomy of a fall. What is something that, you know, stuck out to y'all today? Go ahead, babe. Stuck out to you. Oh, man, so much. It was, yes. it was, it was power packed. Yes. But um, I would say one of the biggest things was um, when he said that fear is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. Like that, that was drop the mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was drop the mic. Um, because it's, we so f fear will keep us bound. It's you know in so many areas of our lives. Yes. It will keep us from you know from really f fulfilling our potential in Christ. Yes. You know? Bible say it's through the fear that they were subject to bondage their whole life. Mm. Jesus Christ had to come down from heaven. Just to get that thing out of the way, because through the fear of death, they were subject to bondage their whole life. Mm, the fear Just the of fear. Death. Yeah. Fear of it. Made it, pushed them into death. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was good. That made me think about the, the scripture, as a man thinking so it is, but that's a good scripture. But then if it's based off of fear, is it that you're thinking constantly, well, then as a man think it, your, whatever you're fearing is going to become that fulfilled prophecy and then, yeah. then that what you have been fearing happens it yes. fills you when you focus on your fear these are the gates to your soul yeah. and so when you feel you just focused on fear you fill your heart with fear then what's going to come out uh. everything you put in it mm. and he give you the work of your hands mm. if he give you the work he Study your heart. Whatever come out of it, I'm going to give you according to your own heart. Your own heart. And if nothing but fear coming out of this, then your that's life is going to be filled what, with. That's what you're going to get. Full of. Full cut of. that news channel off. Hey. <laughs> hey, no, hey no. That's true, yeah. man. That, that is so true. And, and I'm going to let y'all talk. I'm going to uh, talk to my uh, No, 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 no. Because no, no, no. uh, I know it was good. No, 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 no. I'm going to stop. Uh. <laughs> no. Well, another oh. thing that stood out. I just want to touch on one thing, one more yeah, thing. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I know a couple people touched on it, but that that uh, your friends, that's a cheat code. What? That's not only like, that's an A and B part. That's like a, they got a scripture that says, uh, the, uh, the companion uh, of wise men shall become wise, but a companion mm. of a fools fool shall be destroyed. Yeah. Come on, man. So there's an A part to that, though. Like, so if you want to change your life, change your friends. You want to be rich? Get some rich friends. Right. Thanks. You want to be broke? Get some broke ones. I mean, you, you can choose. That, that's yes. the full thing. It's, it's also drawing the line from the old ones, but then you got to do the next part. The next part is getting new friends. Yes. Yeah. And, and look, friendship in this walk, in this journey that, that, I, that I've been on with the Lord since 2010, by the grace of God, y'all, godly friends has really helped my walk. This church, this church family, and yeah. I see church family, but I don't even like say I was driving yeah. the other day. I don't like saying church family no more. It's family. Why? It's yeah. just family. Because look, bro, I'm with y'all like every Sunday, right. every Tuesday. It's 52, 52 Sundays in a year. Yes. Another 52 Tuesdays. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Says so what? 104 days that I'm I'm seeing y'all going through life, hearing y'all stories, hearing yes. what's going on, man. I see y'all more than than my. Actual blood family. Yeah. Yes. We are blood family. And we, and we are blood. Yeah. You know, we but are. He, and he, that's how he looks at us as family. He expects us to treat each other like family. Yes. Not yes. only in word, but look, how, how we in, interact with each other, how yes. we engage. Yes. He's given us that blueprint to carry into this. Yes. <laughs> See how you did family there? See how that was your father there? All right, respect him just like you respect him. Yes. Uh. It was a blueprint. So for our online family, I know you guys are at home. You're like, man, we wish we had that. Well, at the same time, you guys are having that by connecting with us online, which is great. But I do also want to encourage if you're in Dallas, if you're in Atlanta, man, Go be a part. Enjoy. Go yes. to these Bible studies that yeah. they're having. Make some friends, man. Make some friendships. Go through life with one another. You don't want to go. You're not. Don't be an island. That's right. Don't be an island. Right. Utilize your family. That's what they there for. Don't, don't yes. suffer alone. You got cousins, you got brothers, you got sisters, and you fighting Amen. alone. Amen. 
you got a family. Come so, you know. Amen. Amen. That's good, y'all. We're going to get out your way now. Good. You good? Is Unless you guys are good. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so, look. Get out the way. Whew. Man. Wow. I don't know what to say. You talk. I, don't, I feel like I talk too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> Man, glory to God, y'all. Man, thank you so much for chilling with us, y'all, on this yes. wonderful Sunday message today, man. Just, just awesome, total start to finish. Just great. Just great. So, man, our prayers go out to our, our you know, Mayor President, praying that he have much success, man, with his fourth term, speaking it already in advance. And, uh, yes. yeah, man, glory to God. So, a couple of things just real quick, man. Remember, uh, Feast of Tabernacles coming Tabernacles. up October 5th through the 8th. Yes. Register online. All information about it is on our website, philadelphiacc.org. Go there. Yes, and just a reminder um, to the ladies, we will be having the luncheon on the Friday at 2 p.m., but make sure if you are definitely wanting to attend, go ahead and register. Our seats are limited. And once they're gone this time, it, they will be gone. That's so it. make sure, go to the, uh, our website, philadelphiacc.org, and register for the ladies' luncheon to make sure that you are able to get in the house. Amen, amen. Well, I'll just close everyone out in prayer. Most high God, thank you, Lord God, for this day, for this service, for your house being open on today. Everybody that's tuning in, even right now, we command blessings to be upon you and your household. May just because you are plugged into Philly, may that connection that you have here, may it radiate throughout your home, throughout every anyone that's attached to you, your family, loved ones. Those that you work with, may the anointing of God be upon you and that we command blessings and favor upon your life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Shalom. Shalom.